हैव टू लिटल हाइड्रोकार्बन और ऑर्गेनोक्लोइन इन द सेकेंड कॉलम वी हैव ऑर्गेनो फॉस्फेट इन द थर्ड कॉलम वी हैव कार्बामेट सो फर्स्ट वी विल बी डीलिंग विद ऑर्गेनोक्लोरिन और क्लोरिनेटेड हाइड्रोकार्बन सो इफ वी डिस्कस द फर्स्ट पॉइंट दिस क्लोरिनेटेड हाइड्रोकार्बन या ऑर्गेनोक्लोरिन पेस्टिसाइड्स आर हाईली परसिस्टेंस मींस देयर लाइफ टाइम इज लॉन्गर इन एनवायरनमेंट दे आर नॉन बायोडिग्रेडेबल दे बाय अकुमुलेट विद इन द बॉडी ऑफ अ स्पीशीज दे आर लेस टॉक्सिक इन कंपैरिजन टू ऑर्गेनो फॉस्फेट्स एंड कार्बामेट so when you talk about toxicity an organophosphate are more toxic as compared to carbamate as compared to organochlorine if we talk about the mechanism of action of organochlorine or ocps so mechanism of action they block the transport of ions such as sodium ion potassium ion calcium ion across the nerve membrane or either they block acth which is nothing but ACH is acetyl choline esterase which is a neurotransmitter coming to the specific example of organochlorine these are ddt dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane ddd dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane then aldrin dialdrin hch which is hexachlorohexane endosulfan which is organochlorine lindane or bhc benzene hexachloride gamexene and heptachlor these are example of organochlorine pesticides moving towards organophosphates if we study the property of organophosphates one by one they are not persistent they are biodegradable they do not bioaccumulate they are much more toxic than organochlorine because they absorb in skin very fast and their absorption is very high if you talk about the persistence time it is 1 to 12 weeks for organophosphates and mechanism of action of organophosphate sorry they inhibit acetylcholine esterase which is a neurotransmitter by phosphorylation so they inhibit acetylcholine esterase by phosphorylation the next point they are rapidly absorbed through skin lungs and gastrointestinal tract so they can be absorbed in the body from all these routes for example these are the examples of organophosphate parathion melathion methyl parathion they are very hazardous for the person who use them because they can be rapidly absorbed through skin lungs and gastrointestinal tract now coming to the carbamates carbamates these are also short lived like organophosphates these are highly toxic in nature they do not bioaccumulate mechanism of action similar to chlorinated hydrocarbon means they also block the transport of sodium potassium and calcium across the nerve membrane by blocking acetylcholine esterase so similar kind of action is there mechanism of action for carbamates for example if we talk about the example of carbamates the examples are carbaryl which is trade name sivin aldicarb with a trade name timic zetron and their persistence time is day to weeks now we will be talking about two very important aspect so if the examiner ask you to arrange these three classes of pesticide according to their persistent nature so organochlorine pesticides are more persistent in comparison to organophosphate in comparison to carbamate okay then if we talk about toxicity then we have to do nothing sorry we have to just place this organochlorine pesticide at last so the order of toxicity of these three classes is organophosphate followed by carbamates 
followed by chlorinated hydrocarbon organochlorine. Now we will be talking about the mechanism of action of these pesticides. All these pesticides are highly soluble in fatty acids. They are very highly soluble in fatty acids. So they can penetrate the hard fatty material of insects and kill them by disrupting the transmission of nerve impulse. Sorry, this is the mechanism through which they kill the insect. What are the problem with these pesticides? So these are the major problem with these pesticides as non-biodegradability means they are non-biodegradable. They are toxic in nature, source of toxicity. They are broad spectrum. So they also kill the non-target species means the species on which we are applying these pesticides, they are killed by these pesticides. But apart from that, they also kill some of the non-target species. So here in this graph, we have shown the effect on non-target organisms. On the y-axis, we have given the thickness of the shell, egg shell in percent. And on x-axis, we have given concentration of DDT in ppm. You can clearly see on x-axis if the concentration of DDT is 25 ppm then so at 25 ppm of DDT concentration in body of birds thickness of shell is reduced by 20% and more thickness reduction results in breakening of shell. So the moment you see sorry that 25 ppm of DDT is there then you have around 20% reduction and beyond than that there will be more reduction in the eggshell thickness. Therefore DDT and its metabolite like DDE, dichloro, diphenyl, dichloroethene both of them interfere with calcium 2 plus metabolism in birds resulting in eggs with shell that are too thin to support the weight of incubating mother means when the birds is trying to give the warmth or incubating their eggs then these eggs are not properly having the shell so they break earlier and leads the death of eggs sorry so below here is given the diagram of DDT. So the full form of DDT is dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane, which you can draw. Like first you can draw a ethene, which is nothing but C2H6. Then subsequently you can remove three hydrogen from one carbon and then put three chlorine. On the other carbon you can have one hydrogen and to chlorobenzene ring and hence the name dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethene. On the right hand side we have drawn DTE which is dichlorodiphenyl dichloroethene. So instead of single bond we remove one chlorine and the double bond is inserted between the two carbon and rest of the things are same as in the case of DTT. Now we will be talking about biomagnification in the case of DDT. So what do you mean by biomagnification? So the phenomena through which certain pollutants get accumulated in tissues in increasing concentration along the food chain it's called biomagnification. So now you know the phenomena through which a certain pollutants get accumulated in tissue increasing concentration along the food chain it is called as biomagnification. Such pollutants are DDT PCB, polychlorinated biphenyls and even some of the heavy metals which are non-biodegradable and cannot be metabolized by organism. These pollutants generally get accumulated in adipose tissue which is a fat tissue. So there are two terms are written by accumulation or simply accumulation. So this is when, when the concentration increase or accumulate in one trophic level. Biomagnification is when the concentration increase along the food chain or food web. So 
concentration of these pollutants increasing dramatically across the food chain. Pollutants like PCB, DDT are known to cause a reproductive disorder. They cause a reproductive disorder. Now if we see with the help of a diagram, let us suppose aquatic body in which the concentration of certain or the DDT concentration let us suppose is C. Then these phytoplankton which are living in the lake body will be taking something. Let us suppose C1 concentration. These phytoplanktons will be eaten by insects C2. These insects are eaten by small fish which is C3 and that is eaten by large fish and finally this large fish is eaten by fish eating birds which is having C5 concentration. So if C1 is a concentration inside the body of phytoplanktons, C2 inside insect, C3 inside small fish, C4 inside large fish and C5 for fish eating birds. So the concentration of the DDT or any other pollutant which show biomagnification will vary as C5 means fish eating bird will be having more concentration followed by C4 which is large fish followed by C3 which is small fish followed by C2 which is insect followed by C1 phytoplankton and C is the ambient concentration in that water body. So this was all about pesticides. Detail can be studied from the environmental chemistry standard book Manhattan. This was the sole effort of ASS Science Foundation Delhi. Hope you enjoy the lecture.